listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna really? feel so aligned. What changes are black men looking for in black women? Hmm. Changes, that's, that's an interesting way to put it. Um, I think I, th I think about these things from the perspective of black boys and black women, and then black boys and black girls. Um, and I think the biggest thing that our women fail to do for our black boys is to make them feel necessary. And unfortunately, a big part of masculinity or a big part of the masculine journey slash what fuels us is feeling necessary. And because of like white supremacy, because of the disposition that that created in our women, they've had to be everything for themselves. So the, the mindset is we don't need anybody particularly not you. You're not as equipped to provide or protect us, so we don't need you. Um, but what that says to the boys is that they're not necessary. And I think because of that, they kind of spiral into antisocial and counterproductive um, behaviors. So yeah, the, the, the best thing they can do is make black boys feel necessary. Okay. All right. So piggybacking in off that, what makes black men hesitant to fully unify in peace with black women? Fully unify in peace. I think, um, One thing that I hear a lot coming from black women is, you know, this idea that whenever a black man is shot or, you know, uh, beaten by police or whatever the case may be, that black women are the ones at the front lines. Black women are the ones fighting for our cause. Black women are the ones championing our interests, which is a beautiful thing. I, I think what black women um, miss sometimes is the fact that although those things are good things, the concepts are also emasculating. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear people say black women are the backbone of the black community, black women are the leaders of the black community. Those are beautiful things, but they're also inherently emasculating based on what we have defined masculinity to be, and black men also subscribe to those definitions. So I think the tension is, do we wholesale disregard those definitions and redefine them in, in, in a lifetime? Or do we, have to, do we have to acknowledge it first? Do we have to acknowledge that, you know, um, protecting us isn't the way that we're gonna receive love from you. Um, because that's our job, right? And um, I think the question is asking what, um, can you say the last part again? What specifically? What makes black men hesitant to fully oh, yeah. so unify? I think that's what makes us hesitant because you know we don't know our role anymore. We don't know 
our role. A lot of times, y'all don't need, y'all are, black women are out educating black men or educated compared to black men, out earning compared to black men in a lot of cases, out, you know, performing as far as home ownership, corporate employment, the whole nine. So like, we're hesitant because we don't feel like men. And we especially don't, don't feel like we can be men for you. So there's a lot of work we need to do first before we can um, cooperate, as the question said, with Black women. Yeah. Do you feel like there are other races of men that Black women see those traits in before the Black man? Which traits? The traits that you just described. The good ones? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Traits. White men. White men. And that's why you'll see um, a lot of times, like, what, what I find funny sometimes is uh, most of the time with a black woman, you have to prove certain aspects of your masculinity, right? So you, you in some communities, you have to prove that you're gangster. You have to prove that you, you know, you with the shits, you bought that life, whatever the case may be. Um, because that's automatically in question. Versus the white, I mean, the black men who talk to white women, just off the strength of you being a black man, she already thinks you're gangster. So you don't have to prove that, right? So she's automatically soft for you. She's automatically submissive, better to deal with or easier to deal with. And that's why some black men turn to white women. But on the flip side, um, with the corny white dude, even though he's corny and he's not gangster, whatever the case may be, off top, you know he's a provider. He doesn't have to prove that to you. Off top, you know that you know, he's at the top of the food chain from a socioeconomic standpoint. So that's when your submission comes out. Because it, it's really interesting, I see it sometimes, like somebody like Eve, for example. Eve married a white man, or somebody like Serena Williams married a white man. I'm curious to know how just her, their voice is talking to their black, their former black men versus talking to their current white men. Like, does their voice automatically soften when they're talking uh, to the white man? Or is it just as rough as it was when they were talking to the black man? I'm curious about that. Okay, so I guess my next question would be, what do you think that black men can do to change their overall image or vibe towards the black woman? Image being how black women see us? Mm -hmm. How they react to us, how you see us. I'm, me personally, I, I'm hard on black men. I'm hard on niggas. Um, you know, in most cases, I feel like we're the problem. And I always start with us. I mean, if I'm having a conversation with um, black women, I might criticize them. But nine times out of 10, I'm starting the conversation with black men. And what we need to do is we need to become more competitive. And that means you know, from an education standpoint, that means corporate participation, that means networking, that means, you know, um, the ability to put our pride and ego aside and actually prepare for the future. Because that's, that's sometimes why niggas get caught up in bullshit is because of pride and ego. But they don't think long term, right? I use the analogy of the Tom Brady versus the Michael Vick. Michael Vick is a 10 times better athlete than Tom Brady. But the reason Tom Brady is always going to be more successful than Michael Vick is because his game is more sustainable. He can drop back in the pocket and throw the ball for the next, for 40 years. Whereas Vick can only run a 4-2 for maybe five years. And then taking hits, that's not sustainable. And I think a lot of times we as black men, we rely on flash 
we rely on, you know, peaks, um, but peaks don't sustain. Peaks don't last for a very long time. So I think the best thing we can do is focus on the long game and, and position ourselves. As I'm, as I'm saying, as I'm talking to myself too, position ourselves to be competitive long term and know that that might mean you might give up, you know, the short term gratification that we've used to define our wins. Right. So, yes, yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing for me.